part of the class. All right, everyone, welcome back to the class. I'm gonna mute everyone. Um, so I'm changing the format a bit. I, uh, I got the uh, feedback that people wanted to cover the entire chapter, not just one or two uh, yes, yes. Mishnas. Yes, so, <laughs> so that's a challenge, but uh, I, I, I challenge accepted, meaning that we can try to cover every week at least the majority of the chapter. And what I'm thinking is to start to read through the chapter Mishnah after Mishnah, because in every word and every line, we can, we can debate. And we, like we did last week, we started debating on some of the words, and we can go on and on, and we should, we should do that. But why don't we get, um, let this course be a, a course where you get the knowledge of, uh, pick up the, the basic um, ideas and concepts of Piki Avos, and we will maybe elaborate like the JLI uh, likes to do up to, up to one or two of the Mishnahs after we go through the chapter. So being that we kind of trying to be aligned with the uh, weekly um, re weekly chapter, because as I explained last week, one second, I'm trying to, something that work in the recording. Give me a second. Okay. Never mind. Everyone can hear me? All right, super, perfect. Um, so because, and, and, and again, we're gonna mute everyone and if you have questions, we're gonna take time for your questions. So um, as we explained last week, the, uh, six, the six weeks, six Saturdays, six Shabbos between Pesach and Shavuot, each one corresponds to another week. Um, however, we continue that cycle of studying the Pirkei Avot, every Shabbat, another chapter, until Rosh Hashanah. So we're going to go through three or four times the entire cycle. So maybe after our six-week uh, course, if we want, we can, re we, can we go revisit some of the, of the Mishnahs. I think that makes for a great uh, class. So um, the, so we're going to do chapter two today, right? Although we did not finish the entire chapter one. So I'll begin with uh, reading chapter two, I sent another email. Those who don't have the PDF, don't have the copy, actual copy, I sent another email. I sent an email out today with the one or two chapter, but then I sent another PDF in, this, in the email with the full chapter if you don't have it, but I also will share it on the screen. And also, if you want to get a hard copy, please uh, just email a regular to the, to the class and we will mail, mail it out to you. Chapter two of Ethics of Our Father begins with the statement of Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, chapter two. And I'm gonna go through it in English. And again, if you have a certain question on a certain chapter, not write it down or maybe make a note. And when we finish going through the chapter, we can revisit some of them. Hopefully I can help um, elaborate on them. Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi would say, which is the right path for man to choose for himself. Now, again, remember, as we talked in the introduction, the entire Talmud and Mishnah is really the, uh, the, the work of what, how a person should, has to live. What are the obligations? What are the laws? What are the commandments? And in, in detail, how a person should do the commandments. This tracted of Pirkei Avot, of ethics of our father, is different, where it is words that we that the, the sages said, let's give advice, let's give, let's, give, let's give advice for life, not about what is the obligation, how to live a life, what they have to do, how much they have to pray, what mitzvah they have to do, but how a person should conduct himself morally and going above the letter of the law, to, to live a life of, of, of goodness and kindness to them and for others to understand what is, what is it all about. So they got together, let everybody have to say something. What, is, what, what would you give advice for generations to come? So Rabbi Yehuda Nasi again would say, which is the right path for man to choose for himself? That which is harmonious for those, for the one who does it, and harmonious for mankind. Be as careful with a minor mitzvah 
at with a major one. But you do not know the reward of the mitzvahs. Consider the cost of a mitzvah against its reward and the reward of a transgression against its cost. Every mitzvah comes with a reward. Um, you, some people believe there are big, the big mitzvahs, that, that there are big mitzvahs, there are small mitzvahs, important mitzvahs, non important mitzvahs. I only do Yom Kippur, I only do this and this because of the reward or versus the consequence. But is those who learned Tanya, especially in last week's class, we learned how every mitzvah is equally important um, because it's a mitzvah is a connection to Hashem. Contemplate three things and you will not come to the hand of transgression. Number one, know what is above from you. What is it? What, know what is above from you. What is it? A seeing eye, a listening ear, and all your deeds being inscribed in a book. If you think about these three things, that there's a seeing eye, that God sees everything you do. There's no way you can hide. And God hears everything you do. And more than that, that everything that you do in your life is recorded in a book, if you think about it, it will prevent you from wanting to do something that goes against God. All right, I can see from the face expression that there is so much that you got to, we can discuss this Mishnah for a whole hour now, right? What kind of book is written? Yes, what kind of movie are they going to show us after we die? It says that they're going to show us our movie of our life. They're going to show us everything we did for our life. You're going to be watching your own script. For another time. Chapter uh, uh, Mishnah 2, Rabbi Gamliel. Now you will also, it's interesting is to, to pay attention to the names of those great sages who come, uh, who, who are mentioned here. And each of them were in their own right amazing um, spiritual giants and scholars who contribute so much to Jewish life um, and Jewish wisdom and Jewish uh, moralities and values that we have today. So Rabbi Gamliel, the son of Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, if you t pay attention, in the first Mishnah, it was his father that spoke, Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, who was, Nasi means he was the leader, he was the prince, so to speak. He wrote actually the Mishnah, he wrote, he took and he actually prescribed the entire Mishnah, or the majority of it. So his son of Gamliel, the son of Rabbi Yehuda Nasi, would say, beautiful is the study of Torah with the way of the world, as the toil of them both cause sin to be forgotten. Ultimately, all Torah study that is not accompanied with work is destined to cease and to cause sin. Um, number three. Uh, no, here that this is PDF. Those who work for the community, it comes an important uh, uh, instruction to community activists and politicians. Those who work for the community should do so for the sake for he of heaven. But well, then the merit of the ancestors will aid them and the righteousness will endure forever. And you, says God, I will credit you with great reward as if you have achieved it. Moving to three. Be careful with the government. We just said about how a person as an individual who is engaged in the community has to make sure they should not do it for selfish reasons. They should do it for the sake of heaven. And if they do so, they get assistance from above. What is the assistance from above? Not only from God, but their ancestors. This is fascinating. Your ancestors, the souls of your grandparents and parents who are in heaven, help you, assist you when you do the right thing for others. So now let's get to the government. What is the government? What is, what's the instruction of the government? Be careful with the government, for they befriend a person only for their own needs. My friends, this is written 3,000 years ago, right? <laughs> they appear to be friends when it's beneficial to them, but they do not stand by a person at the time of their distress. I see a lot of shaking heads. All right. Number four. <laughs> Maybe every politician that gets elected, we should, we, should, we, should, we should frame this saying, quote, and send them as a gift on behalf of the community. Mazel tov and you new assignments. <laughs> Remember those words. Number four, he would also say, may that, may that his will, I'll go a little bit slower here, may that his will should be your will. So make that his will, God's will, should be your will. In other words, try to make that, try to incorporate that your desire should be really the desires of God. Meaning, that do try to do what Hashem wants you to do, not what you are selfishly want to do. Because if you achieve that, 
something amazing will happen so that he should make your will to be as his will. That's an, what does that mean? So that he should make your will to be as his will. Because in turn, if you want to do what Hashem wants to do, it means you become in sync with God because your, my will now is the will of Hashem. So automatically, how do you know that my will is the will of Hashem? When you realize that he also wants to make his will, meaning he wants to accommodate, he wants to assist you in fulfilling the, the desire that you want to do for Hashem. So his will, you can, you can inspire, so to speak, in God to draw certain blessings that you wish to have in order to fulfill Hashem's will. And then takes the Mishnah a, a, a step further, nullify your will. Nullify your will before his will. First he says, make your will. Here he says, nullify your will, meaning that you are achieving a higher level, an, a transcendent level, that you are a servant of God, that you don't even, you don't even consider your will as, a, as, a, as an I. There's the me, there's the ego that wants something. Rather, I am completely melted in the presence of God, that I live every day, I breathe every breath, and my will is nullified of the will of Hashem before his will. So that he should nullify the will of others before your will. And now we get introduced to the great sage Hillel. All right, Hillel, many of you have heard before. And in chapter one, we mentioned Hillel a lot, but we didn't do it last week. Hillel would say, do not separate yourself from the community. You come to a, you come to a, a community, don't separate yourself from the community, which has many, what does that mean? So if everybody in the community um, uh, steals and lies, you should not separate yourself from the community? Obviously not. So but in, in, in halachic terms, there are, um, there are, there, are, there can be different, every community has its custom. Um, so make it very simple. There is, in the Jewish community, you can have an Ashkenazi, an Ashkenazi community, Ashkenazi customs, and Sephardi customs. So if it's an Ashkenazi synagogue, an Ashkenazi community, and one Sephardi comes in or vice versa, don't say, I'm going to pray my way. I'm going to, I want to conduct my Seder. So I want to do my thing in front of everybody else. That's called you separating yourself from the community. That's just on a very uh, minor level, but obviously it has many more implications. Continue, do not believe in yourself until the day you die. Very powerful words. Do not believe in yourself until the day that you die. Again, what does that mean? I thought we were going to have self-esteem. Why oh, don't believe in myself? You should believe in yourself. Well, we're, we're taught all the time. Do not believe in yourself that you have done it in life, basically, that you have achieved your mission until the day that you die. Do not judge your fellow until you have stood in his place. And last week we did something similar. There we said to judge your fellow, right? But we, there Rabbi Talfon said to judge your fellow favorably. Here we're saying do not judge your fellow until you have stood in his place, which is another powerful message and lesson. Right? Think about what we could teach our children that. Never judge someone until you, until you're actually in their place. If you can just try to imagine yourself to being in their place, and, and understand them, then you come to the mission we learned last week. Not only don't judge them, but judge them favorably. Do not, um, do not say something that is not re readily understood in the belief that it will ultimately be understood, which means when you make a statement, make sure you are clear about it. Don't say something, even if it's profound, that people will misunderstand it and they will make, you, you'll make a fool out of yourself and they will turn your words completely upside down. So again, do not say something that is not readily understood in the belief that will ultimately be understood. Yeah, I'll say my statement. They will figure it out eventually because they're gonna maybe take time. Be clear, teach clear, and make it readily understood. And do not say when I, when I free myself of my concerns, I will study. See how Hillel, who gives life lessons, goes from one era to another era, Right? Don't separate from the community. Don't believe in yourself. And don't judge others. Uh, and now it comes to when I don't say, when I free myself of my concerns, I will study, for perhaps you will never free yourself. Right? That's, that's in, in, in terms of studying 
Torah, which is an obligation, which is the, the, the manual for life, don't say, you know, Torah is very nice. I, I love to learn with it. When I'm retired, when I'm, when, I'm, when I'm free, when I have free time, then I will, as we all know in many other eras, because um, perhaps you will never free yourself. Um, we're going to go to number five. I'm going to make a break in between, so I'll take questions soon. Number five, he would also say a boar cannot be sin-fearing um, and ignoramus cannot be pious. A bashful one cannot learn. A short-tempered person cannot teach. <laughs> Nor does anyone who does much business grow wise. In a, and, and another thing, who's still talking? Hello, still talking. In a place where there are no men, strive to be a man. That is a, that is a, <laughs> now man not as a man, as a, as a male, meaning man as, this is, a, 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 meaning a, a, if there is a job to be done, right, basically, in a place where there is no man, there's a job to be done and nobody's doing it. Strive to be a man, try, try to do, take the job. Don't say, let somebody else do it. Right? That's, 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 that's being proactive. Number six, he also saw a skull floating upon the water. Said he to it, because you drowned others, you were drowned. And those who drowned you will themselves be drowned. All right, How does, what does that sound like? Basically, right, karma, right, karma. Ah, the Jews believe in karma. <laughs> in, 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 in Hebrew, we have, the, we have the saying in the Mishnah, Mida Kenegin Mida. Hashem, Hashem um, measures, uh, measures according to the measure, meaning the way you behave yourself, that will be the outcome when it comes to, to positive and it comes to negative. So if you do something positive, Hashem will do something positive. If you do something negative, it will come around to, to you as well. Uh, all right, here comes a very controversial number seven. Sandy, I can, can't wait to see your reaction. All right, ready? <laughs> he would also say, still Hill talking, no, we are very familiar with Hillel as being the, you know, the man of love and peace with the uh, famous story of the... Um, the, uh, the, the convert who came to Hillel, teach me the Torah on one foot, right? And he said, love your fellow man like yourself. That is the mitzvah of the Torah, the rest is commentary. But he had a lot more to say than just that. And maybe not that many people pick it up. But so obviously, and if you understand who the person was talking, and when he said such beautiful words like to the convert, obviously when he says these things, they come with a lot of, in the wisdom, and we need to try to 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 um, understand it, the beauty and the richness of it. So here's, here here it goes. It goes pretty much in in a, in a sequence here. He goes first in the negative and then the positive. We also say, one who increases flesh, increases worms. Okay, <laughs> one who increases possession, increases worry. That's a very very powerful true statement. The more possessions you have, you increase worry. One who increases wise, increases with craft. One who increases maidservants, increases uh, promiscuity. One who increases manservants, increases severity. And one who increases Torah, and now he goes to the positive. One who increases Torah, increases life. One who increases study, increases wisdom. One who increases counsel. There's a difference between study Wisdom and counsel, meaning counsel that you're giving others counsel. You're sharing your wisdom with others. You're giving them direction. That increases understanding. As I mentioned last week, the more you learn from, the, 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 Rabbi, said, Rabbi said, the more he learned from his teachers, he learned from his students. The more he learned from his teacher, he learned from his students. When you teach, when you give counsel, you get a deeper understanding. One who increases charity, increases peace. One who acquired a good name. What does it mean, acquire a good name? 
you did something nice, you did something beautiful, you did a mitzvah, you helped somebody, quite a good name. Good name doesn't mean that you, you, you became the, the CEO of a big company and, and, and amass a lot of wealth. That's not, a, that's not what the mission means here. Good name means that people say, he's a good man. He's a good person. He's a mensch. So look what he says. One who acquires a good name, acquired it for themselves. What does that mean, acquired for themselves? That is really what you, the, that's really what, what you acquire, what you keep. Because all the gold and the silver, all the, all the wealth you acquire doesn't go with you. After you pass, you cannot take it with you. But a name, a good name, right, that you acquired yourself as a legacy. One who acquires the words of Torah as a quiet life in the world to come. Um, let's do one more and then I'll take questions. Rabbi Yochanan ben son of Zakkai received a tradition from Hillel. So he was kind of a disciple, a student of Hillel, who, Rabbi Yochan, son of Zachai, who was a figure who lived at the destruction of the second temple period. There's so many stories of Yochan, Yochan and Zachai, how, what he endured, the torture, at the, when the Romans came into Israel and destroyed Jerusalem, how he tried to negotiate with the emperor not to destroy Jerusalem. Um, uh, and then, so here Rabbi Yochanan, the son of Zakkai, who was the student of Hillel, said, or oh, he received the tradition. Remember, he received the tradition as we learned last week. They received all the oral Torah, the oral traditions from generation, from teacher to student, to student to, to teacher to student, and so on. So what did he say? He received the tradition of Hillel and Shammai, and he would say, if you have learned much Torah, do not take credit for yourself. It is for this that you have been created. You take us Torah, don't become, don't take the credit for yourself, meaning, look what I got, look what I achieved. Of course you can be proud of yourself, but that's not something you, that, that's something that you acquired as a, as a, as a bonus. In other words, you were born as a, as an average, uh, as, you know, as an average neutral person, and you acquired a certain wisdom called wisdom Torah. Your whole purpose you were, you were born was to acquire Torah. So don't, don't take the credit of something that it is your it is part of your purpose and mission. Of course, take credit, but don't make it as look for who I am. I got something extra, it's not extra. It's why you're here. For. I will um, stop here quick and take quick questions, just short, not long questions, please. And if it's a long question, I'll have to uh, ask for later. I'm um, gonna meet everybody here. Any questions so far? Does Increase flesh mean get fat? <laughs> well, okay. Good question. On the surface level, right? It's it's it's, it's it sounds grotesque because we, when what what he, what, he, what they're saying is don't don't um, don't do indulge in in in. in physical pleasures for selfish, selfish uh, reasons. At the end of the day, you have a body and you have a soul. Your body is the vehicle for the soul to express itself. The body should be a, a, when I say a vehicle, it's like a wagon, right? Or just wherever the horse goes, the wagon follows. In, in other words, this, the, 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 the body should serve the soul, not the soul, should not serve the body. And just the mission sometimes wants to bring out how the body is sacred. A body is very sacred. As we know in, in, in Jewish law and tradition, we have to respect our bodies. We can't, we can't damage our bodies. We have to care about health because the bodies don't belong to us. At the end of the day, what happens after a person dies, the body will be, uh, will be, will be, will, will go in the ground. And we know what happens in the ground, right? So he's basically right. saying, if you're going to be, all your life's all going to be about body. Remember, it's all, the more body you have, the more worms you have. That's not, that's not where you should have the kach where you should be indulged in. Okay. That's on the surface level. Now, obviously, th there's more deeper, deep, uh, uh, deeper. I'm quickly looking here at the notes of the Rebbe on this because it's a, it's, it's a good question. Um, the 
basically says it's it's painful for the soul to watch the body um, because it, it warms. It's interesting, actually. It brings down from a from a commentary that lived about uh, 600 years ago. Warms doesn't only mean after death, but warms actually means that your body becomes weakened by, by illness. Mm. So your soul needs a healthy body to, to, to do its mission in the world. And it's, the, more you, the more you eat, the more you have flesh, the more illness you'll be busy with. Interesting. All right, what else? Any other questions? Yes. Going to karma a little bit, just a little bit. Okay. In other words, it tells you that you have to do these good things because if you drown someone, then in your life you will be drowned. Why is it that uh, these uh, Rabbi Yochanan, the son of Zakai, why was he tortured? Was that karma? Or was that, um, in other words, what we are experiencing in this life is what we are destined to experience. I understand karma. I don't understand why people who are uh, very good, very uh, giving, very kind have to suffer. Or is that just something that uh, is just up for grabs? In other words, there's no explanation. No, basically, nothing that happens in this world and in the world to come happens by, by chance. Everything happens by divine providence. Now, we have choices. We make choices. Our choices have consequences. So Mishnah is teaching us, and I don't know the, what, what your definition of karma is, and that's why maybe karma is more in the negative. We just, uh, we just read it. But, but the, 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 what the Mishnah is saying, what my understanding of the Mishnah is saying is that, that, uh, that any, anything that you do will come around, not necessarily in the same exact manner or fashion, meaning if just in some of you drown, some of you will get drowned. But don't, don't even think for a moment that you'll get away with it. That you, you're, 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 you're either, either physically or in, your, or in this world or in the world to come, you will have to pay the consequences. So why do people who are extremely good and righteous have to suffer? Okay. So, so that's the, that's the million dollar question, right? What's the million dollar uh, question? Just curious, just curious. <laughs> no. It says no, uh, the, because the, the, you drowned others, you were drowned. And those who drowned you will themselves be drowned. If somebody gets, somebody drowns, right, God forbid, it doesn't mean that they had drowned somebody in their life or previous lifetime, right? It, so it, it doesn't mean that uh, Rabbi uh, Kohan. Yeah. Uh, if Yochab and uh, was suffering in his previous lives, in other words, he never tortured somebody else in his previous life. We don't, we don't know these things. We don't know what 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 happened to other people in other people's li in their lives, or we don't know ourselves. Um, we know that we we have to we we living in the present in our present life. Ha, uh, believe that, that nothing that you do will go unnoticed, as we learned earlier, and nothing will come without consequence. In other words, also in the, in the positive sense. In other words, sometimes you, make, you do a lot of good and you don't see the immediate reward, right? It's unfair. Hashem, Hashem will give you the reward one way or another. If you understand it now, or you'll understand it in the world to come, but he doesn't, he, he doesn't hold back from giving the consequence in the positive or the negative. Now, you have to also understand, we are also very interconnected as humans. We are interconnected with each other, which means that we bear responsibility for each other. And uh, it says, you saw, you saw, you saw, you saw, we, take, we take responsibility for each other. So at times, sometimes when we, when we don't, we, we sometimes, or especially a great sage, has maybe accepted on them to do, go through some type of suffering to atone, so to speak, or to, to take the consequence of others that they want to, that they want to heal. Atone. This concept is true. You were cut off. I'm sorry. 
Okay. Uh, in other words, that part of what you said was cut in the middle. I, I, uh, said I that heard a sage wishes some, to... Some, we are all in this together in this world. Yes. And sometimes we have, to, we have to go through some experiences. I'm not rationalizing why we have to go through. But sometimes, and these are the mysteries of the world, but that sometimes we have to go through maybe because somebody else did something that maybe I had in a previous lifetime something to do with it, or I did not teach enough or not, was not role model enough, and I bear some type of responsibility or by, cho by, ch by choosing especially a very spiritual giant and sage like Rabbi um, Zakai, he actually went and into, into tremendous uh, fasting, says the Talmud says, because he was trying to take upon himself the, 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 the punishment that was about to come on the people, which would be the destruction of the temple, which, be, which would happen because people were, did not treat each other properly. He tried to take upon himself the suffering, so to speak, hopefully to alleviate the other consequence of other people. That, 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 that is uh, another piece of information, especially when you ask in to Rabbi Yochum Zakai. The whole purpose and point here basically is nothing happens by chance and everything you do will have a consequence. It's like the it's it's like even we know today in okay. science, right? The flap of the what is it? The flap of the butterfly has an effect in New Zealand, right? As we, so every action has 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 as a consequence. Three action. Moving to the next question. Any other questions before we move on? All right. Yeah. I don't hear. Leon, are you talking? Because I don't hear. You. Um, sorry, maybe I, I didn't understand. I, you know, you talk about previous lives. I thought that it's appointed unto men to die once, and then the judgment. Why? Well, I, I don't. I've never heard of previous lives. Absolutely. On this earth, you mean you don't believe in reincarnation, do you? Absolutely, we do. <laughs> Welcome to the club, Leona. <laughs> no, the not, not the the, the uh, reincarnation, and even more so, we believe in, re, in in resurrection. Every day we we pray and wait for the for the resurrection to happen. We believe that all the dead will rise up a life. All the righteous people of the world for our history but, will come but, back but to life. a life eternal, not here on earth. No, here on earth, here on earth in the physical body. Well, but Leona, uh, allow me to, right. to, to address this either at the end because okay, you're touching sure. a bigger big, but I just want to make sure you understand. And I know some people get very surprised when they hear that because they thought it's not a Jewish belief. Yeah. It's an other religion, but all the other religions they could straight out of our, out, out of our prophets and out of our scripture. Absolutely, our soul is an actual part of God, of the, of the vine. That existed before we are before we were born, right. and it, and it will continue to live on after we die, and and most of the souls of today we are we are reincarnated from previous generations. That makes a whole other fascinating uh, topic, and we have talked so many times about it. So we'll do that. We'll leave that for another time again. Moving on to to verse number eight, and I'll mute everybody here and share screen again. <sighs> Actually, we're number nine, right? Number nine, okay. So here, and again, if you, if you later on will go and, and research these people, these sages, it makes for a fascinating uh, history, history um, how, what they each went through in life. There's so many stories. The Talmud is full of each of their stories and many of their opinions. Um, how they, how they all lived their lives. But Yochanan, the son of Zakai, had five disciples. He had many more, but this were his five chief disciples. Who were they? Rabbi Eleazar ben the son of Porcanus, Rabbi Yeshua, the son of Hananiah, Rabbi Yose, the Kohen, Rabbi Shimon, the son of Nathanael, and Rabbi Eleazar, the son of Arach. He would recount the praises. He would say, Rabbi Eleazar, the son of Porcanus, is a cemented cistern that loses not a drop, meaning everything that he absorbs, nothing gets lost. 
Abi Yeshua, the son of Hanania, fortunate is the one who gave birth to him. Abi Yosef the Kohen, a chassid. <laughs> think about a chassid. A, a chassid in, in, you know, it's not that what we, what you think of chassidic, uh, a chass, chassidic movement. A, a member of the movement, somebody who lives a life of a, Hasid, of a, of a Hasidic, of, a, of the Hasidic movement, is a Hasid. A Hasid is a t term that's already coined 3,000 years ago. A Hasid means, actually, um, the words of the Pirke Avot, the whole book that we are reading, is also considered, in, other, in another place, it's, writ, it's, it's described as the Milsa de Hasidusim, words of the Hasidic saying. Meaning, what is a chassid? A person who goes above the letter of the law, who doesn't just look at Torah, at life as a checklist. I have to, to put on the villain, I have to pray, I have to get tzedakah, rather goes more. So to get, get that, that title was a praise. Rabbi Shimon, the son of the son of fears sin. Rabbi Lazar ben Arach is an ever increasing wellspring. It's interesting, the first one, Eliezer, the son of Horkanes, is a cemented system that loses not a drop, right? Meaning he receives information, doesn't lose a drop. Rabbi Leza ben Arach is an ever-increasing philosophy, meaning not only he doesn't lose, but he, never, he, he always adds and adds another layers of depth of, depth of learning. Rabbi Leza ben Arach, if you go through the Talmud, was, one, was perhaps the most genius, scholar and spiritual giant in all of Talmuds. And there are fascinating stories about him. Uh, and time is too short, but we will hopefully, again, we'll take notes. Just on Eliezer ben Arach, we can give a, a whole six week course. But Eliezer ben Arach was, was, as you can see now, look how we see that he was special. Rabbi Yochanan used to say, we'll continue the Mishnah. He says like this, if all the sages, now he's trying to kind of weigh Right, I know they have it in sports. Right, they have they have in sports. Right, uh, scores of of uh, of a better athlete. Right, so now this is very unique in that uh, that the, the Mishnah says, let's kind of analyze who was who was who is who is more um, scholarly, who's who's who is those who gets the high scores over here, because Rabbi Yochanan just gave us five of his students. Right, so Rabbi, Yo Rabbi Yochanan used to say, he says about his students, if all the sages of Israel were to be in one cup of a balanced scale, and Eliezer, the son of Horkinus, were in the other, he would outweigh them. You can have all the sages of Israel in one side, and one person, who? Eliezer, the son of Horkinus, right? Um, now, Abishal said in his name, I know that you just said Eliezer, the Hork, son of Horkinus, is very special. He will outweigh all of them. I mean, he is super, but there's more. He's not as great as whom? Let's, 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 let's follow along. Abishal said his name, if all the sages of Israel were to be in one cup of a band scale, and Eliezer, the son of Horkinus, included. Just now, before, he was not included, but he would weigh down the other side. But now we take Eliezer Horkinus and we put him over on the side of all the sages of Israel. And Eliezer, the son of Arach, were in the other, he would outweigh them all. <laughs> So Eliezer ben Arach, the last one of his students that we mentioned, he is even more powerful than Eliezer and Horkness on all the sages of Israel. And Eliezer and Horkness himself is powerful because he would outweigh the sages of Israel. But him against Eliezer ben Arach, not a match. Okay. It's kind of interesting. What's the point of bringing this in here, right? We're talking about actually here not... We didn't we just learn earlier not to measure people, not to judge people, right? Here all of a sudden we're making a hierarchy. But the next Mishnah starts to now kind of interview them. Tell me one, what would be the one saying you want to let people leave the world with? Look at number 10. Your Yochanan said to them, go out and see which is the best trait for a person to acquire. Be the one trait. You know, sometimes they ask in an interview, what is your one, uh, your one piece of advice or your one lesson of life? What was the one thing you want to leave people behind? So said Rabbi Lezer, a good eye. Typically that means, good eye means to look at everybody positively. Said Rabbi Yeshua, good friends. 
one of the best trade makes sure you have, you have quite a good friend. We learned last week. So Rabbi Yossi, a good neighbor. Interesting. Good neighbor, right? Said Rabbi Shimon, one who sees what is born from their action. A person who can always see the potential. What is born from the action, meaning they don't wait for the action to happen, then say, oh my gosh, let's look what happened. But they can see before they do something. What will be the consequence? That's important. Said Rabbi Laza, a good heart. Good heart. Said to them, now again, Eliezer is Hokanus, Elazar is Ben Arach, right? The, 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 the main guy, the, the strongest guy. What is his major, <laughs> his major statement? What's the most important trait? A good heart. That's also, also takes, take, takes how, how do we understand that? In a, in a sense, right? A good eye is important. A good friend is important. A good neighbor. Why a good heart was the one that encapsulated it all? The mission will explain. Said to them, I prefer the teacher of Yochan said, I prefer the words of Elazar, the son of Rav. It almost looks like the, the, the Yochan and Zakai had a favorite, right? He was his favorite student. Gave him so many praises. Now, not only what he said, even what he said, I like his more than all of yours. Why? Because he says, I prefer the words of Elazar, the son of Rav, for yours, but his words includes all of yours. He said to them, go out. And by the way, what does that mean? So easy, that's easy way. If you have if you have a good heart, if you have a good heart, the Talmud says, it opens your mind. We know in Tanya we always learn that heart and mind are so connected. Mind controls the heart. But if you have a good heart, meaning that you the heart is the seat of the emotion, that means that you are that that you work on your characters, you work on your ego. You open yourself other to, up, up to other ideas. You open up to other horizons. Not everything, not saying I know it all. That, by extension, opens up that you can look at others with good eye, that you can have a good friend, because in order to have a good friend, you need to be, you need to be able to, to welcome a friend, to be open to that, to have a good neighbor, right? Again, what defines a good neighbor? The way you behave, your, 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 your neighbor will either be good or bad. It's not, it's not, sometimes, oh, I have a horrible neighbor. Well, sometimes look yourself in the mirror. How are you conducting yourself? You can get a bad neighbor. There's plenty of people complaining. I once saw a letter from the Rebbe. Somebody was complaining to the Rebbe that I have a bad neighbor, which I do. Make my life miserable. And uh, the Rebbe said that every morning in the prayer, right, when we wake in the morning, we say, uh, we say a whole list of prayers. And there we say that Hashem should protect me from bad, uh, from, from bad um, advice, bad neighbor. He says, when you say that, try to have lots of concentration. <laughs> concentration. Yeah, concentration. You, 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 he, he, Perhaps Hashem will help that the, the neighbor will, will, uh, will, will turn into a good neighbor. Anyways, moving on. Um, so number 10. I'm sorry, no, we're in the middle here. Um, he said to them, Yeah, we're middle number 10. He said to them, go out and, and see which is the worst trait. Now we talked about the best trait. What is the worst, worst trait? And also the way he says go out is a, is, is a, he's not just telling them to just shoot it up your hips. Go out means really delve into it. Think about what will be the one, the worst trait that the person should distance themselves, or which a person should most distance themselves. Said Rabbi Lazar, an evil eye. Oh, right? I'm going to ask, just believe in evil eye. <laughs> evil eye is the opposite of a good eye, meaning looking negative at somebody else is a horrible trait. As, as the saying goes, when you look negative at somebody else, you're, you're damaging them, you're damaging yourself. 
So said Rabbi Shua, an evil friend. Said Rabbi Yossi, an evil neighbor. Everything the opposite. Said Rabbi Simon, to borrow and not to repay. Very interesting. To borrow and not to repay. That is the most evil trait, that he should distance himself. But one who borrows from a man is as one who borrows from the Almighty, as it states, the wicked one borrows and does not repay. But the righteous one is benevolent and gives. Said Rabbi Lezer, an evil heart. He said, a good heart is an evil heart. Said he to them, the teacher says, again, <laughs> Rabbi Lezer, I prefer the words of Rabbi Lezer, the son of Arach, yours. Why? For his words include all of yours. <laughs> How does an evil heart include all of them? Yeah, we know that evil heart is a source of all, all, all evil. That's how you look, ne look negative to others. If you have an evil heart, you borrow money, not planning to repay. They would each say, now nah, they would each say three things. Okay. After they all picked, now they would say three things. So Belezer would say, to honor of your fellow should be as precious to you as your own. Number one. Number two. Do not be easy to anger. And number three, and repent one day before your death. How do you know when you're going to die? <laughs> repent one day before your death. So the, the Talmud says, a person should always live his life, not in a negative way, thinking today is the last day. Thinking the, the, today is the last day. Because imagine... You were told, God forbid, that today is your last day of it, right? How is your day going to look like? Are you going to, are you going to sleep in? Are you going to uh, start gossiping about somebody else? Are you going to curse your neighbor? You're going to do the most out of your day. You're going to treasure every moment. So repent one day before your death, meaning every day you should treasure the day and take it, take Take your action and the consequence of your action as 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 a real thing. Not okay. I'll 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 steal a little bit here. I'll lie a little bit here. Ah, I'll repent on Yom Kippur. I'll repent when I get into my 80s before I die. I'll make it. I'll make it work out, and I'll I'll get a good deal with God. Warm yourself by the fire of the sages. Warm yourself. Warm yourself by the fire of the sages. Be aware lest you be burned by its embers. But the bite is the bite of a fox. The sting is the sting of a scorpion. The hiss is the hiss of a serpent. And all the words are like fiery coals. Every word that comes out, are like you have embers, they, they can warm you or they can burn you. If you take the words and you apply it in the right place, in the right time, then they will give you life. But because they're so powerful, if you put them in the wrong place, in the wrong time, right? You're going to be standing, you put, imagine you'd be standing on the corner of your house and scream at everybody, remember you have to be a good neighbor. Remember to talk with a positive uh, eye, right? Everyone's going to look at you, you you're, you're, an, you're, you're crazy. You're, you're not going to take, they're going to, they're, they're going to laugh at you and they're going to turn it around. Number 11, I'll be sure would say oh, an evil eye, the evil inclination, and the hatred of one's fellows drives a person from the world. Not only from the world to come, but also in this world. A person who constantly lives with the evil night, who constantly is, is, is in charge, the evil inclination is in charge, is in the driving seat of your life. And you have a life full of hatred to others. You don't live a life. Yeah, you could be living a, your physical life, but that's not called living. Number 12, number Yossi would say, the property of your fellow should be as precious to you as your own. Prepare yourself for the study of Torah as it is not an inheritance to you. Meaning, don't just take it for granted, yeah, I have my Torah because I'm Jewish. Torah belongs to me. God gave us the Torah. You have to prepare. You have to study. You have to acquire. It. And all you did shall be for the sake of that. Everything that you should, that you do, this is a very, uh, a very, a very important line. The last few words that all you did should be for the sake of heaven. That everything you do should think about: Is this something Hashem wants me to do? Not only that, you know, twin times we 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 categorize 
uh, for the sake of heaven, meaning not for heaven's sake, for the sake of heaven, meaning I do things for Hashem. What are the things I do for Hashem? All right, let me think. Um, all right, I pray. Make a blessing before I eat, I make a blessing after I eat, I uh, fill in, I keep Shabbat, I keep kosher. These are the things I do for God. But these are things that, that are maybe 5% of your day. The 95% of the rest of your day, these are things I do. I can work, I sleep, I eat, I exercise, I have family, I, I, I have a good time. I, uh, those, are not, those are not godly things, those are not holy things, those are not, those are not mitzvot. That's the Mishnah. Everything you do, and those who learn Tanya know this is a constant theme. Every moment of your day, everything you do should be for the purpose and meaning, for the sake of having meaning. It should be a meaningful experience. It should be not for, a ego, for the ego to inflate my ego, but why am I eating? So I'm, I'm eating so I have a healthy body so I can... I can be there as a family. I can be there for the community. I can help others. Why am I sleeping? Why am, why am I exercising? Why am I, why am I taking a vacation? I need a break so I can, I can, I can re, re, rejuvenate, so I can come back, and I can be stronger, and I can be there for me. So everything you do should be imbued that there's a purpose and there's a meaning to it. It doesn't have to be too deep. It doesn't have to be, oh my gosh, I've been wanting to think, is there a purpose? Why am I doing this now? Is there a purpose? But slowly, just living a life of purpose and meaning makes, uh, you know, automatically, eating healthy becomes uh, an easier experience because there's a purpose and meaning why you eat. That's an example. Number 13. Uh, Bishimen would say, be meticulous with the reading of the Shema and would pray. When you pray, do not make your prayers routine, but an entreaty of mercy and supplication before the omnipresent. As is stated in Joel, for he is benevolent and merciful, slow to anger and abundant to loving kindness and relenting of the evil decrees. And do not be wicked in your own eyes. So no, number one, prayer is not a checklist. I have to pray. It's not a, don't make it routine. Let it not be robotic. Prayer is the service of the heart. Prayer is a time of connection. Prayer is not about what I need. God, I need this, I need that. And that's not prayer. That's a demand. Prayer in Hebrew, tefillah, comes from connection. It's a time where I connect with my core, with my, with my creator. And, and, and if I take the time and make it meaningful, every word I say, with the proper concentration and make it make and make it uh, that every word is real, then in turn again Hashem will will also um, return give everything that we need in order to fulfill our mission. And do not be wicked in your own eyes. Uh, that's another classic line in Tanya. Remember those chapter one of Tanya. Remember we had the whole thing about the tzaddik and the Russia, and it says uh, uh, he said I'm a Russia, but person not to say I'm a, I'm a wicked person because if you think it to yourself I'm a wicked person I will pull you down pull your self-esteem and you can never never grow number 14 Rebbe Lezer would say be diligent in the study of Torah know what the answer to answer to a heretic and know before who you toil and who is your employer and who will pay you the reward of your labors okay you see, you see here is labor laws right but here, obviously, he's also talking about, about, the, about, about the boss, the real boss. God is your boss. God put you on this, on this earth to toil. We are, we, are here, we are born to toil, we're born to create, we're born to accomplish something. But remember that he will, that he will pay you. As we, uh, he will pay you for the work you do. As we're going to see in the next line, the next fit, number 15, which the JLI is emphasizes on, on this mission, now, Bitafim would say, the day is short, the work is much, the workers are lazy, the reward is great, and the boss is pressing. Oh my gosh, what does that mean? <laughs> Basically, it, it, it addresses procrastination. Procrastination, if you want to have a good, quick lesson on procrastination, is number 50, Rabbi Tafel. Right? Procrastination, first thing, says, yeah, I, I have time to do it. Right? I don't have to do it today. I have time. I have an assignment. I have to do it. I have another week. 
no, 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 the day is short. And you can say, okay, I'll, I, I, I can do it and I, I, can, I can do it, but I can, I, I can wait a few more days and I'll do it one, two, three. It's not a big deal. What I have to accomplish, why should I do start 10 days earlier? I'll do it the day before the deadline. It's not a big deal, I can do it. He says, number two, no, the work is much. Then you're gonna say, okay, but even if it's a lot, I'd rather do it then. I am busy now. You know why you say you're busy now? Because you're really, you're, you're lazy. The worker are lazy. And the reward is great. Whatever you do, Hashem does, sometimes we think, that why should I do it now? I don't see the fruit of my labor. Let me do it later. Let me wait till uh, later. When I, before I get the paycheck, I'll do it. My boss will have you. Give me the check. The reward is great. Because here we are really focusing on the work, the labor that God has given us when we come to this earth. He's not here talking just about labor, regular labor. He's talking here about in the more big, uh, big, big work, called life. You're put in this world for X amount of years with a mission to fulfill. And don't say, when I'll be older, when I retire, when I move to Venice, Florida, and retire, then I will start focusing on my mission. Till then, I need to be busy in my career. That's the focus. And when I get older, I'll have children. I'll start a family. Right now, my career is my priority, et cetera, et cetera. The day is short. The work is much. It goes together. Meaning, there's a lot to do, and the day is short. Don't wait for it because 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 it's 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 short. You don't have that much time. And don't be lazy. The word is great, and the boss is pressing. That's like oh, the boss is pressing a little strong. Um, but let's see how many more do we have to finish the chapter oh, just one more let's finish one more then maybe we'll go on the boss's pressing idea number 16 he would also say it is not incumbent upon you to finish the task many times you feel the task is so large right i, I can never finish the task the task of life my mission is huge right god wants me to do all this i cannot do that so i don't even want to start the process so many mitzvahs that god wants me to do Shabbos, kosher, that. I can't do all of them, so I, will never, I'm not, I don't even want to start. It says, your job is not to finish the task. But, but, but do get into it, do one task at a time. And But neither are you free to absolve yourself from it. If you have learned much Torah, you will be given much reward. And your employer is, truth, is trustworthy to pay you the reward of your labors. And know that the reward of the righteous is in the world to come. So, um, on the last thing on the boss's pressing, um, if you look quick in the other um, in the other text that we gave out, um, look over here in text four from the Mishnah. In uh, actually, from my mind, is text four. Since we know, X4 Mamonis in chapter two of the course I am class textbook. Since we know the reward for the mitzvot and the, and the good that we merit for keeping the way of God that is written in the Torah is the life of the world to come. Why does it say throughout the Torah, if you obey, you will receive such and such? He's asking, my mom asked a question. What, what is the reward for mitzvah? Is it in this world or is it in the world to come? We just read earlier in the Mishnah says that the reward of mitzvah is in the world to come. But in the Torah, throughout the Torah says, if you live, if you do the mitzvahs, I will give you rain, I will give you livelihood, I'll give you health. So which one is it? Why does the Torah throughout the Torah, if you obey, you will receive such and such. If you do not obey, such and such will happen to you. All these things that are in of the present world, such as the plenty and hunger, war or peace. Sovereignty and subjection, inhabitancia of the land, and exile and success and failure, and all the other promises of the covenant. Explanation of the matter is as follows God gave us the Torah, it is a tree of life. Whoever fulfills, it at the, fulfills all that is written in it and knows it will be a complete knowledge, merits thereby the life of the world to come. 
And God also promises us in the Torah that if we observe it with joy and with good spirit, he will remove from us all the things that may prevent us from fulfilling it, such as illness, war, hunger, and that he will, best, he will bestow upon us all the blessing that bolster our hands to observe the Torah, such as the abundant food, peace, and much gold, gold and silver, so that we need not to preoccupy ourselves all our days with our material needs, be free to learn the wisdom and observe the commandments by which we will merit the life of the world to come. In other words, Ramana says, the, 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 all the rewards of all the mitzvahs that we do, all the mission we do, we will reap those rewards in the world to come. But it doesn't mean to say that we're not going to get, there's no reward in this world. The rewards in this world, which are in a sense, the materialistic rewards that God promises us that will give us the health and the, and the wealth that we need, that, that we want. Again, it is for us to enable us, to help us in our mission. If you are, if you truly want to do God's will, and bless you, sh and God blesses you to give you the means, obviously it will become a lot more joyous and much more, much more, you much more in a good spirit when you have good health to perform a mitzvah, when you have the means to do a mitzvah, than when when you don't have them. So, so the boss is pressing. Sometimes this is this is an interesting I, I concept. Sometimes we 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 have we get the reward before we even start the job. Meaning, we we get the blessings of health and 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 livelihood even before you have done anything towards your mission. So I can say I don't need God. I don't need, I already have everything. I have my health, I have my wealth. That's it, I don't need God. Many people turn to God in times when things don't go well, right? When things do go well, they don't think so much about God. So, so what he's saying perhaps is that when you do get blessed with, the, with, with material, material things, God is kind of giving you already the, the, the introduction. He's pressing you, look, I'm giving it to you. I'm giving you the, the reward before you even start it as a motivation. Go out. So when we start wake up in the morning, we have life. We wake up and we say, Moda Ani. There's nothing more, um, nothing more rich than having to be able to breathe and to be alive. And we recognize that, that this is a gift that God has given us before we started our day. The boss is pressing, not in a bad way, but in a powering way. Now I can go and joyfully do what Hashem wants us to do. All right, I'm going to take questions. Any questions so far? Anybody questions? No, thank you, Rabbi. It was very welcome. <laughs> Maya, I like the, that you have the name, screen name Chabad. Yes. It's, not copyright, it's copyright, but for you... <laughs> I didn't even know you were on, see? <laughs> yeah. Okay, good night. Okay, uh, before, before you sign up, Maya, yeah. before I forget, next week, Thursday, I won't be able to give class. I want to do Wednesday evening. Forgive me for the change. Does that work with everybody? Not big deal. It's fine. Okay. Wednesday, Wednesday, 7.30, 7.30, 30, just next week. Okay. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, can we do it um, before or after the Chabad class? Oh, uh, you're right. You can't have the Chabad lecture. Um, Let us know. Just send a message. Yeah. Uh, we can do it Tuesday night if you want. No, Wednesday is fine, but just before or after. Before is before is difficult and after is difficult. Okay, then Tuesday. I, I do have kids at home. But uh, the, so, so it's a full confident schedule. But Tuesday night, how about we do Tuesday night? Work, everybody? Yes. Sandy, no? I, hear, I don't hear you, Sandy. You're on mute. She said no. Okay. Uh, <laughs> how's Monday night? You know, uh, 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 Bella, let's do Wednesday night, 730. 
and I will send you the recording for the uh, for the class next week. Fine. For for both recording. Fine. Because, okay. Uh, okay. Because this is more interactive. The other class on Wednesday night is is always is, is there's a recording of it, and I'll send you that recording. So if okay. you miss it. All right. Okay. Is, thanks for understanding. Huh? When will it be? Wednesday night, seven thirty. We'll keep it a Wednesday night, seven thirty. Okay. Okay. You want to have a fantastic evening. Have a good Shabbos. Stay healthy. Yes, and, thank you uh, very much. Continue study. Yes. Thank everyone. All the best. Thank you, Rabbi. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.